For today's In Focus, we travel to Ethiopia and the northern town of Lalibela. Located in the Ethiopian highlands, this fascinating town is also a high point in Ethiopian Orthodox Christianity and a centre of pilgrimage. For Lalibela is famous for the monolithic churches which seem to rise out of the very living rock. Monolithic means of one stone. Here, a synergy of people and place have created a remarkable architecture. These structures, carved from a single piece of stone, are far from basic or crude. They reflect a sophisticated building tradition, applied with skilled hands. And it is easy to see why this remarkable place has become a focus for ritual and pilgrimage. But how and why were they built? The town and churches are named after an early 13th century king called Lalibela, which means the bees recognise his sovereignty, for he was supposedly surrounded by them at his birth. Lalibela was part of a dynasty which traced its origins back to the kings of Israel. One day the king was given a vision of Jerusalem, and inspired to build a new Jerusalem as his capital. This was quite possibly in response to news of the capture of Jerusalem by Salah Hadin in 1187. King Lalibela immediately set about making plans to build his new Jerusalem. He was determined that the town of Roha would become a city worthy of the name Jerusalem to stand the test of time. He began by renaming aspects of the town to reflect biblical names. The river which ran through became the River Jordan. And across this new Jerusalem sprang a total of 13 churches. According to legend, these buildings sprang up remarkably quickly, with men working on them during the day, and a night shift worked by angels, who naturally worked twice as fast. Let us take a closer look at these monolithic masterpieces. First, the northern group, and the largest church of Bet Medhan Alem, which means House of the Redeemer of the world. Not only the largest structure in Lalibela, but possibly the largest monolithic church in the world. Its style is believed to have been inspired by St. Mary of Zion Church in the nearby city of Aksum, and it currently serves as the home of one of Ethiopia's most precious religious and historical heirlooms, the Lalibela Cross. Bet Medhan Alem forms part of a complex, along with Bet Maryam, Mary's church, and Bet Golgotha, the church of Golgotha. Mary's church is possibly the oldest of all of the structures in Lalibela. Within, the church is beautifully designed, covered in ornate geometric designs, incredibly vibrant colours, and of course, plenty of Judeo-Christian symbolism. The church of Golgotha is said to contain the tomb of King Lalibela himself, along with the Selassie Chapel and the tomb of Adam, supposed father of the world. Next we take a look at the western group and Bet Georges, or the Church of St. George. This cross-shaped building has been called the eighth wonder of the world. It is the most well-preserved and probably the last to be built of the Lalibela churches. Carved from solid red volcanic rock, it is a striking structure, sunk into the hillside. Once again, craftsmanship is of the highest standard, with beautiful details, such as here, a window. And of course, within the Church of St. George, there are in fact images of St. George. Here, he has been beautifully drawn, shown of course, slaying his dragon. Finally, we look to the Eastern Group and Beth Emmanuel, the Church of God is with us. The architecture of this church is distinctive. Carved again from one rock, it shares many features with other buildings in this part of Africa. Nearby is Beth Macorios, partially collapsed in an earthquake, possibly a former prison, and ironically supposed to represent paradise. Next, Beth Abalibanos, House of the Holy Father, carved such that the rock face can still be seen above. And finally, Beth Gabriel Raphael, Church of Gabriel and Raphael. This church was possibly a former royal palace and is linked to a holy bakery. All of these magnificent buildings raise the question, how did King Lalibela construct them in only a 40-year reign? One can see why such a feat is said to have been helped along by angels. 
However, might there be another explanation as to how the town of La Libela gained its fabulous churches? It has been noted that the architectural style represented here at the monastery of Debradamo is replicated in at least two of the churches in La Libela. This style has its origins in the 6th century. It is said to have inspired work at La Libela and been completed after the king's death around the 14th century. However, recent research throws out this hypothesis and suggests instead that the churches of Macorius and Gabriel and Raphael were built up to 500 years earlier by the Aksumite kingdom. In the latter days of Aksum's power, it has been suggested that the eastern buildings at La Libela were constructed as fortifications and palace structures for officials. These structures, inspired by a broader architectural heritage, may well have inspired the work at La Libela to begin and explain how the king can be said to have completed them himself. There is also the suggestion by a local historian that Beth Abba Libanos was built after the king's reign. The king's widow, Queen Mascal Kibra, is credited with building Abba Libanos as a memorial in the wake of her husband's death. This theory stretches the timeline further and enables some buildings to have been built before, some during, and some after the king's reign. Debate and research continues, but whatever the case may be, one thing is certain. The churches at La Libella were not constructed by Templar knights, or aliens for that matter. What they were and are, however, are remarkable feats of engineering and architecture. They are home to stunning works of art, more than 600 years old, and thus rightly are a focus of national pride, pageantry and pilgrimage. They are also of international significance, attaining the status of UNESCO World Heritage Site. UNESCO describes them as exceptionally fine examples of a long-established Ethiopian building tradition. And in this way they serve as cultural beacons, reminding us of the rich, deep heritage and archaeology of the region, the legacy of the Aksumite Kingdom and beyond. Some have expressed concern that the Lalibela churches are at risk of becoming a tourist trap rather than holy ground. However, rituals and rites do continue within the churches. This path of a dual role continues to be negotiated. After all, you can't blame people for wanting to visit a remarkable place which set out to be an expression of heaven upon earth.